Well, good Friday evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, we'll be doing our live stream, 9 o'clock Eastern. Hope you guys all tune in. We'll be talking about the Dallas Cowboys and getting ready for the New Orleans Saints. Um, but something interesting to me is... Um, the good thing, of course, is that the Cowboys, or depending on how you look at things, the good thing is the Cowboys actually have become a little more stable by re-signing Dak Prescott and, of course, re-signing CeeDee Lamb, and we know Micah Parsons will be re-signed as well. I hope that um, getting the win last week, and although that may just be fool's goal because you never know what's going to happen um, from week one, week one is – crazy sometimes a team just looks awful the first couple of weeks and then they turn it around other times they look like world beaters and turn it around and become ass ass so you know don't get too excited or too upset by what you see early in the season in the month of september but at least we've seen some pieces that work well the question now is when we talk about blowing it up our coaching staff of course is on the last year of their deals and we haven't seen jerry jones do anything on that on the contrary, it seems like uh, Bill Belichick seems to be kissing up to the Cowboys and kind of staking his claim that if there's a job opening there, that he might want to be here. Now, you know, here's the thing I, I said with Bill Belichick is you don't want to blow up the team and start over with Bill Belichick because I don't think much like Bill Parcells that he's looking for um, you know, a five-year program of rebuilding a roster and starting all over. I think you're looking at him being more like John Gruden, where John Gruden came in with the team that was established and took him to the Super Bowl and won. You looked at John Gruden, and John Gruden was not a good builder of teams. You saw how that was a failure when he was, of course, you know, doing everything with the Raiders. He just couldn't get anything going with that. But you listen to this with Bill Belichick. It you know he's talked about how much he likes Dak Prescott and so on. And I tell you what, you tell me because to me this is a guy who's saying, "Yeah, I like what's going on here. This is a team that I'd like to coach." Oop, wrong one. Let's try this one. Example. They go into Cleveland and dominate Cleveland's offense. Well, nobody's better from playing ahead than Dallas right, is. Yeah. You know, they can control the ball offensively, and they can they can play from ahead on defense with their pass rush and their coverage players. So that really plays into their hands. We'll see what happens when they get into a tighter game. Maybe they have to play from behind. Uh, whether it goes that way last year, it didn't for them. Yeah, aren't you? I mean, how good is their kicking game though? The guy can make kicks from outside the moon, right? Yeah. And then that, don't ever kick the ball to Turbin. I mean, like, why anybody would kick the ball to Turbin? It would be like I know you would kick it out of bounds to Turbin. Oh, he'd have God. to catch it in the stands if he was going to catch it, right? Yeah, he'd have Turbin. to bat it back on the field. To play. No, look, I think you got to give Dallas's uh, personnel department, Stephen Jones, the personnel department, a lot of credit. Look, the only way you can afford C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott, some of their other high-priced players is you've got to find good players that don't cost too much. They've done it with their kicker, Aubrey. They've done it with the returner, Turpin. Those guys are two of the best guys in the league, didn't cost anything. Another thing they got this year was like another free draft choice. Overshawn had 11 tackles in the game. He didn't play last year because he tore his ACL. So he came back in his second year without playing a snap last year, you know, led the league in tackle or led the team in tackles against the Browns. So, uh, you know, really a great job by Dallas of finding those those players to come in and supplement some of their high price players so they can have a solid team all the way around. Yeah. And I don't say, Coach, to that point, you know, when you find players like that that actually score points you know and obviously yeah. you know the score is the biggest thing so with their kicking game Dallas I thought that was so impressive you guys know obviously being in Cleveland you know you're kicking in grass you're kicking outside oh God, those aren't easy, easy kicks no. now you go to Dallas and you know defensively you're playing on half a field like literally you know they get the ball at the 30 yard line they gain 20 yards and it's three points because it's such a weapon but when you can find those guys that you know you get in that contract that price range that score like you know they have and to do it in Cleveland with another plus 50 you know, you know, yard field goal, which we're, we have a lot of those right now. It's just That's such a weapon for them, and that's what gives them that playing from a head mentality. Was yeah. that 22 field goals over 50 yards or something like that this weekend? I mean, it was a lot. These guys aren't missing many. It's not like they're trying, you know, just trying it every time they get there. When they get in range, they have enough confidence and, and the kicker's record enough to, you know, validate the coach, and they've been putting them through. Yeah, I mean, they – Yeah. Now, you've been hearing Bill Belichick praising the Joneses. You know, look, look listen to him. You know, you got to give Stephen Jones credit for finding the players that they have. And you do, because when you start thinking about this, you know, some teams have to go out in free agency and find established players because they're not finding. I mean, think about this. Terrence Steele, your right tackle, okay, 
We didn't say anything about Terrence Steele last week because he played good. The only time you talk about offensive linemen is when they play bad. Undrafted rookie free agent. You think about Turpin, USFL guy, nothing you gave up for him. Albury, same thing, nothing for him. And like they pointed out that, you know, we got big bonus help because of Overshone stepping in and playing well. And then you start thinking about, well, you know, you got Deron Bland that's injured. And somehow the Cowboys seem to be able to draft cornerbacks late in the draft. So if you're Bill Belichick, you're saying, okay, they got talent and they're good at finding more of it. This is like a lot better then if I look at the idea where Jet fans, excuse me, Jet fans, or actually Jet fans and uh, Giant fans say, oh, Bill Belichick will be here next year. Uh, that's the last thing you want if you're a Giant fan or if you're Bill Belichick. The cupboard's bare with the Giants. That is a complete overhaul where you've got to start from scratch and literally change the culture, find a quarterback. Um, Bill Belichick's not looking to do that. Bill Belichick's looking to... Uh, win another Super Bowl and get the all-time win record and get out and that spend time with this 25-year-old girlfriend. So with the Giants, that's too much work. You you don't even have a good GM. Your GM is a freaking idiot and uh, has screwed the pooch. So, yeah, I would say Bill Belichick is definitely – keeping the powder dry and, and definitely working on making relationships with the Cowboys because I think he's really and truly eyeing becoming the coach of the Cowboys if Mike McCarthy falls through. Now, the the flip side of this, I have to say, is this, though. When you look at the job Mike McCarthy and Brian Schottenheimer have done, with Dak Prescott in this offense. That, you know, I don't know that Dak is as good as he was last year without Mike McCarthy in this offense. And, I mean, Mike, listen, don't don't get it twisted. Dak Prescott actually made Kellen Moore. I'm going to say that Kellen Moore, Dak Prescott covered up for a lot of problems with Kellen Moore. And maybe they both needed each other. But Mike McCarthy, much like... Mike Zimmer with the defense, Mike McCarthy's taking to a whole nother level. And that's where you look at this and say, are we better off getting somebody else as the head coach and losing the possibility of having the guys that have gotten this offense together? I don't know. Um, I hope that we don't have to find that answer out because I'm hoping that this season ends up being a real success and that Mike McCarthy, you know, people will talk about, you know, Mike McCarthy's not it, but I got to say, a guy who's coached a team to three 12 win seasons in a row, he has to know something out there. But we'll talk about that more later tonight, and I'll see you guys at nine. Peace out.